Even though I spent hundreds of hours on the Wii U version of Hyrule Warriors, it turned out there was a lot more to the definitive edition on the Switch than I first thought, so I ended up getting it. Most people just say it contains all the stuff that was in the Wii U version and Hyrule Warriors Legends, but I didn't play Legends, so just saying all the stuff from that version is also in the definitive edition doesn't really help. So I'm going to go through the additional content that is in the definitive edition that wasn't in the Wii U version, so anyone else who also didn't play the Legends version can see what they'd get if they decide decided to get the definitive edition. I'm doing this assuming all the DLC packs for the Wii U version were bought, but I will state what was DLC and what wasn't, so if you didn't buy the DLC, what the hell are you watching this video for? Go get the definitive edition! This will be split into three sections, additional content like extra levels, major gameplay changes like unlockable goodies, and then minor gameplay changes which are nice additions but don't really bring much to the table. I'll start off with Legend Mode, which is the only thing available right off the bat in the Definitive Edition, which I will call DE from now on, but once you've completed the first stage it opens up all the other modes. In the Wii U version, there were five DLC stages released which detail C as story, taking place before the events of the main story. These stages are also available in the DE, but unlike the Wii U version, there are sculptures and heart pieces to find. What wasn't in the Wii U version at all are the nine stages that make up Linkle's story and the Wind Waker stages, which take place during and after the main story. Both of them are in the DE with their own heart pieces and sculptures. There doesn't seem to be anything new with challenge mode or free mode, so everything that was there in the Wii U version, including Ganon's challenges which were Wii U DLC, are present in the DE. Not much else to say about those really, so on to adventure mode and holy bejesus there's a lot more. In the vanilla Wii U version, all you got was the regular adventure map. By killing the Skulltulas in legend mode and the adventure map, you unlock illustrations which unlock stages in the reward map. Without DLC, there were 4 illustrations to unlock, but various DLC packs added 3 extra adventure maps, with each one having its own illustration to unlock, taking it to 7 illustrations and thus 7 reward map challenges. With the DE, you get all that as well as 5 extra maps, with each one having its own goodies to unlock. You also get 6 extra illustrations, which means you get 6 extra challenges in the reward map, making for a total of 13 challenges rather than 7. That's it for actual playable content, so now it's on to some of the major gameplay changes. All 29 characters are available to play as. In the Wii U version, the DLC characters like Skull Kid, Linkle and Ravio were just given to you with all three weapon tiers unlocked, but in the DE, you have to unlock the characters and weapon tiers in the various adventure maps. In the Wii U version, there were three weapon tiers as well as a few 8-bit weapons, which were an alternate third tier weapon. There were some new weapons included through DLC like Ganondorf's Trident, all of which are unlockable in the DLC. DE. Although there are no new weapons in the DE, what you can get is a new 4th tier weapon. A 5 star 3rd tier weapon and an 8 bit weapon had an attack power of 420 which was the strongest you could get in the Wii U game. A 5 star 4th tier weapon has an attack power of 750, so quite a large jump in power, but that's not all. You can get a 4th tier plus weapon which adds a second element to the weapon, so Darunia's Megaton Hammer, which is usually a fire weapon, also has dark darkness added to it with all the benefits associated with that. 8-bit weapons are still available, but they're just skins rather than being separate weapons. During the game you now have the ability to switch between characters. You may have to wait until a certain point of a stage and you can't always choose your allies, but if the allied base is about to fall, someone needs help or a Skulltula appears, rather than having to leg it across the battlefield, you can switch to a character that's closer to where you need to be. You can tell them where to go and do stuff like take a keep or kill a certain enemy, but the AI hasn't been improved and their level doesn't seem to come into it when you're not controlling them, so I don't think you can sit back and let them do all the hard work, especially as once what you've told them to do has been done, they won't go off and do something else, they'll just stand there. So I usually command them to go somewhere and then when they get there, I take control of them, do what I need being done and then switch back, but send my minions somewhere else to keep them busy. Certain missions have been changed to make use of this, like in the first stage of Legend Mode. In the Wii U version, once you get the bombs you just blow up some boulders and carry on, but in the DE, the door blocked by boulders is also locked, so you need to change to Zelda, capture the keep which opens the door. There are also owl statues in certain stages which, once activated, can be used to warp between by using a golden ocarina, but again, they don't appear in every stage. 
The final major addition to talk about is the My Fairy section. In the adventure maps you find fairies and depending what you feed them and make them wear will affect what abilities they have. Food is initially found in pots in the adventure maps but once you've found it that food type will then become a possible drop from enemies. Clothing is also found in the adventure maps but they come from chests. Whether or not a stage contains a fairy food or clothing is shown in the rewards info section. I'm not going to go into too much detail with the fairies but to put it simply each food boosts certain personality traits and the fairy's level. As it levels up, it gains up to four abilities depending on its personality traits. The first one I found would resurrect me if I died but only once per battle. You can also unleash the fairy in battle where it'll do huge damage over a large area and leave a lasting effect in the blast area. The effects can be reducing enemy defense, healing over time and a load of other things which depends on the fairy's element. Both the blast area and the lasting effect improve as the fairy levels up. It costs varying amounts of your magic meter to unleash the fairy in this way, certain clothing categories reduce the amount required, so it's a tough choice as to whether you use the fairy or fill the magic meter for focus spirit. I'd recommend looking up a full explanation video for the My Fairy system, especially Games Brain video, I'll put a link to the video in the description, and they can become massively beneficial. Now for some of the minor additions and changes, so this part will be fairly quick, starting with the number of enemies. It seems as though there can be a lot more enemies on screen, and when things get busy, there hasn't been any lag, even when using it in handheld mode. I'm guessing a lot more weapons, normally 5 per battle, compared to the 3 the Wii U version usually gave. Due to the increased enemies and weapons, money is a bit easier to come by, which is very helpful for the training dojo. You must be crazy if you think you can get every character to level 255 without using the training dojo. The Weapon skills from the Wii U version are all here, as well as some additional ones like the 5000 KO heart power, which increases your attack power depending on the maximum number of hearts the character has, and is apparently one of the best weapon skills in the game. The Master Sword has two abilities, one is unlocked by getting all the first, second and third tier weapons, and the other by getting all the fourth and fourth tier plus weapons. Luckily it now only requires 10,000 KOs to unseal, rather than the 25,000 it did in the Wii U version. The Apothecary has all the potions that were part of the Wii U version, including the DLC ones, but also has a few extras mainly revolving around the additional aspects of the game, like the food for fairies. As there are a lot more mixtures to make, you need a lot more Skulltulas to unlock all of them. Getting some of the Skulltulas to appear in the adventure maps has slightly changed. There's still the 1000 KO one, but the second Skulltulas in the Wii U version all appeared by completing the first mission and killing 1200 enemies without taking 4 or more hearts of damage, but now the requirements are much more varied, sometimes requiring a certain number of keys to be taken or killing a certain number of enemies using special attacks. Some of the characters that were DLC in the Wii U version now drop new materials like Skull Kid's hat and Twilight Midna's hairpin, which also means the materials required to make certain characters' badges has changed. It's a shame you can't sell unwanted materials, but I guess you can't have everything. Item cards you get during the adventure maps can now be bought from a card shop as long as you've already obtained it naturally in that map. Captains like Pose or Moblins now get an item symbol above their head, so if you hit them with the appropriate item at that time, it makes their attack hit your enemies rather than you. Something similar could be done in the Wii U version, but there was nothing to tell you what item to use or when, so you may not have known you could do it. If you have multiple playable characters and you get them all close to a boss, you get teamwork bonuses like magic absorption. Fine Finally, there's all the costumes you can unlock. All the ones from the Wii U version are here, as well as some additional ones, so there's plenty to keep you going. The only thing that seems to have been lost are the network links, but really, who cared about those anyway? Oh, and there's also split screen multiplayer, so yay! So that about wraps things up. This certainly isn't an exhaustive list of every change as I haven't played every map or gone through every challenge, but I hope it's been useful to decide whether or not the DE is worth buying or if you'll just stick to one of the previous versions. But now, if you'll excuse me, I have some moblins to destroy. Certain missions have been changed to make use of this, like in the first stage of Legend Mode. In the Wii U version, once you got the bombs, you just blow up some boulders and carry on, but in the DE, the door blocked by bulbers... Bulbers? Oh, bollocks. 